I can't tell you how excited we are. The new season's upon us. Uh, we did a whole lot of changes the last over the summer, a lot of new additions. Really, I think we addressed a lot of needs. I think we spent the summer really investing time with our players, and, and it was a huge sacrifice. I can't thank Wes and his staff enough for the time we spent. We'll touch on that during, during this session, but uh, I couldn't be more excited. I'm grateful for what's ahead, I'm grateful for all the work that Wes has put in, the players have put in, and uh, can't wait to get going. Yeah, it's a uh, you know, very unique situation. You know, we've had a lot of movement uh, over the last uh, probably eight months. And, uh, so it's a, it's a new team, but it's the same. Very familiar feel to it. Um, Got to give Tom and his staff a ton of credit just as far as hitting from the draft, you know, free agency. I think we really had an opportunity to upgrade, uh, strengthen, and bolster our roster. So I'm extremely excited about uh, where we are right now as a group. And uh, a lot of challenges that lie ahead, but certainly something we all embrace and look forward to. Open it up. First of all, Tommy and of course, Wes, Wes, happy birthday, by the way. Let's get that started. Um, guys, it's been a few unusual off seasons, as we all know. So, my question to both of you is how advantageous has this full off season been for you as a coach and of course, for you as a GM? Uh, you know what? It's uh, two points. It's been the first time that I think a lot of guys have had a full off season. Think about Rui and Danny, you know, just because of their young careers, the norm has not been the norm. So having this stretch of time uh, is going to feel a little different. It's, it's unique to them. Uh, I, get, I, I think for us, it gives us a little bit more balance from a staff perspective. There's a normal workflow. We want to play deep into the summer. We want to have short off seasons. So that's, that's the goal. Um, but the way it's, you know, it ended in, in its own way, I think it gave us a different uh, opportunity to get out, spend time with players, uh, reevaluate things from the, from the top down, you know, what we like, don't like, things we want to change or alter. Uh, and it gave us a, a little bit more time to peel back more layers. I think that's going to help us as we get into preseason and training. I think to your point, you know, we, we had spent 18 months cramming three seasons into prior to this. So now this so much you can hit its normal cadence. And normal to us is not necessarily normal. To, to outside world, but getting players back with their national team, you know, watching Chris Staffs and what he did with Latvia qualifying. Hopefully they got that to get one more win and they qualify for the World Cup next summer. And what Danny was able to do with Eurobasket, what Mike Williams was able to go with, with Team USA down to Brazil with Craig Sword. Those are normal things on the calendar too. We hadn't been in, I hadn't been to uh, Eurobasket since 2017, they hadn't existed and that they hadn't taken off the calendar. So those things are normal too. But I think uh, what we were able to have here, very unique, I, really since May, we've had players in the gym and coaches working with them. We had some great additions. We'll talk about the, the trades, free agency, the draft, but also as, as a staff, we had another coach that's, that's made a big impression on everybody. So I think, you know, to your point, getting back to normal is a great thing and now, accelerating the schedule you know we're, we're sprinting to the starting line we're, we're starting early and this trip that's ahead of us is a fantastic opportunity for us as an organization to, to play golden state the world champs play them in japan and, and the opportunity to, to go and experience that culture i think it's fantastic obviously we have a player that's uh, looking forward to going home as well so there's a lot of good stories Follow up on that real quick. Um, on the Japan trip, obviously, uh, you have a good schedule for the players. So, what are going to be some of the top priorities for you as an organization that's trying to clean from that experience? Well, bottom line, so far, camp. Uh, you know, so there are a lot of moving pieces, a lot of logistics to uh, maneuver. But, you know, we still have to take full advantage of those days. Uh, back during the flights, and, you know, how do you normalize when you get back? Uh, our medical team's done a terrific job. Our operations people are. Uh, Kept us informed of all the things we have to do. There's some things we're going to want to do. I think Louis excited for the opportunity to kind of give us an in insider look at, at his uh, home country. Uh, some things that are important to him. And we want to take full advantage of that and experience uh, you know, all, of, all of what Japan has offered culturally, historically. Uh, I'm a big fan of cuisine, so I'm looking forward to that, that dynamic. Um, but we can't lose sight of this is still a business trip and, and we're there for part of training camp. So we have to take full advantage of these days and get as much in as we can. 
coach with 11 returning players and some familiarity, especially with Morris, what do you see his impact being on the team and how immediate do you think you'll see that? Uh, well, actually, I've seen some of the immediate impact already. Um, he's a connector and he's a guy that uh, I'm not sure how, but around the league, everyone knows Monte and he, he does a terrific job of uh, ingratiating himself, you know, beyond just the between the lines. He's obviously a point guard at the heart. Uh, I think he's accelerated his offensive game over the last few years. Uh, that showed, you know, going from a G League player to, you know, a roster guy into the rotation and eventually a starter. So, you know, that's a, it's a great story, but, you know, he's a guy that serves credit. He's earned and carved out his, his own way. But he, he prides himself on running the team. And I think that's going to be a huge benefit to this group because uh, he's going to know what the group needs at the right time. And how do you see Bradley Beal helping facilitate that? Well, they're going to play off each other, you know, and I, you know, I don't want to lose sight of you know guys like DeLon Wright, like uh, Will Barker. You know, there's a lot of pieces that gives us the flexibility to put a different group out there, different pairings. Uh, and still, there's, there's not going to be a ton of drop off. That's, and that's the most exciting piece. It gives us a lot of roster balance. Couple of questions. Um, one, historically, teams that take trips overseas sometimes have difficulty when they get back, kind of regaining their footing because of the few we just know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. How, what's the, how, you mentioned medical and operations? What's the kind of symbiosis been with all those groups in terms of trying to mitigate some of that carry on? And specifically with Rui. Obviously, there's going to be a lot on this plate by design, and, and I'm sure he wants it, but how do you keep him from getting over? Take one and take the other? I'll, I'll say this. When you go on the, the trip that we're going on, it, it's just time intensive, so there's no way around that. And if we spend time dwelling on, okay, this is going to really, really be an awful thing, then that's what's going to be the message. I think we we're treating it as, hey, this is a heck of an experience. We've really taken great precaution in terms of the times that we're going to practice, what we're going to eat, when we're going to sleep, even waking people up on the plane down to that kind of detail. At the end of the day, people are going to have to adjust, and we, we understand that. We know when we come back, it's going to take some time. We're going to really, to your point, kind of ease back in, and, and we have two, home, uh, two preseason games when we get back to kind of figure that back end out. But these first two games, we have three practices before essentially we play. You know, so that, that kind of resonates in our head. That's why it was so important after Labor Day. This gym's been cool. I had some opportunities to get some runs, guys getting their legs underneath them. Um, we're learning as we go. Fortunately, we have somebody that goes back and forth to Japan frequently, and we're tapping into Rui's knowledge on how to adjust as an athlete. You know, when we get old in DA, we got all different things we got to do. The young guys, they, Rui can school them up a little bit. So, Looking forward to that. I think we're in a good place. The medical staff's on a great job. Oh, yeah, just, you know, the medical staff down from the practice times, I think the sleep times, the nutritionists as far as when to eat, what to eat. I think they're all trying to find the best practice to help mitigate any lag or lasting effects. But there's no way around it. It is what it is. And I think uh, that's going to be excited for the opportunity. Obviously, anytime you play the defending national uh, NBA championship, it's like that, that, that should get your uh, juices going a bit. Um, and to do that you know, in a foreign country, I think that's uh, it's a great opportunity. Um, just kind of to follow up on hi, everybody, nice to have um, on DA's um, question, but what kind of factors are in place to keep Rui from, or at least kind of help mitigate the burnout that you talked a little bit about last season coming off of the Olympics and everything? Sure. I'll say this, that we've, they've done a great job. His management staff uh, with his agency has already done most of the legwork of getting all the necessary photo shoots, anything that's going to happen out of the way so he can get there and focus on basketball. Certainly there'll be some exchange and get, a, get an opportunity to get in front of his fans and everything. But I think he's in a great place. I think he's looking forward to going back. I think the time that we're on the ground, essentially, there's not going to be a whole lot of opportunity to do anything other than basketball. So that's a good thing. He's looking forward to seeing people, reconnecting with the community, but just being in front of those fans, I think that's really the big 
big coming out for him. It'd be the first time he's been back since the Olympics. So that's uh, that'll take care of itself. I think the, the photo shoots, the interviews, all that stuff, a lot of it's going to get done ahead of time. You know, and I, I have some people that have taken that advantage because it'll be a far better interview here than he will be there, I guarantee. <laughs> Um, and then Wes, uh, have Brad and KP gotten on the floor together? I know guys just kind of been in casually in camp hasn't really started yet, but have they had a chance to just kind of feel each other out? Um, and a little will, bit. Will Brad be full go for training camp, no restrictions with the wrist? Uh, I don't want to answer for the medical staff on that, uh, but right now it looks great. <laughs> so I can tell you what the eyes say, but... Uh, um, yeah, tell me what you say. Well, I, I, think, <laughs> I think he'll be ready. And I, I don't want to jump the gun. I think once again, it's... Uh, It'd be great to have everyone full strength to do what we need to do, but um, and I think we'll also have to be smart to make sure that we're uh, you know, attacking this thing strategically and we're measured with everything we do. It's you know it's great to have guys out there for two preseason games, but um, it's a long season. I mean, we want to make sure it's a long season. So um, I'm not going to get you know overly consumed with you know who's available, or how much guys are going to play. Um, we do only have four preseason games, so we need to make sure that uh, certain groups get minutes on the floor together. They develop that on court synergy uh, sooner than later, but uh, I don't think we need to rush into that or worry about that on this on this trip. I would add the the connectivity these guys have had this summer. It's been wonderful. They they're very familiar with each other. But to your point, Brad Coos. And, and KP really didn't play together at all last year. So taking this opportunity in September to do a lot of things, not just on the floor, but off the floor has been great. And, you know, I look back two years ago, we were in the playoffs against Philly. There's three guys that played in that series that are still on this team, right? And the two guys that didn't really play, Danny was injured, and Anthony Gill was spot minutes. But Gaff, Rui, Brad, that's all that's left. So it is a new team. It's not new to us because we're familiar with these guys. They've been around, but they're new to each other, a lot of these players, and I think they're going to blend well. I think uh, one, one person not to sleep on, it's just been a fantastic veteran presence for us, and Ben Tosh gives his ability to bring people together. we got a lot of good connectors. I think there's bookends, and, and you know, I just kind of brag about these guys for a minute, but they're, they're really high character people that love to be here, love to represent D.C., can't wait to get in front of the fans and show that this is new. That this is a new team and we're excited. I think uh, I can't go back enough and say the time that Wes's staff spent away from their families to go be with these players on their turf, going to Lapia. What Wes is, uh, you know, he's getting first name basis with a lot of pilots. And <laughs> I didn't even travel in Yeah, it's amazing when you look back because uh, I realize what we're asking. You know, you go from the draft, the free agency, the summer league. And you kind of want to get some downtime. That's when we were really ramping up even more. And the players all got together in LA, went out, saw them, and they're in after, you know, we had 14 or 16 guys who were there. You know, Denny and KP were playing with their national team. Everybody else was there. I think that speaks well to what these players want to accomplish this season. Okay, it's their team. Uh, we can do the best job possible. We can, we're here to be the guardrails, but ultimately this team is up to them what they want to do and go out and get it because I think they, they have the same mind, same spirit. And the competitive gene, that, that's really what Wes has put on this team from day one. You're going to come in and everybody's going to compete for minutes. Everybody's going to compete every day in practice. That's how you're going to play. And that's a results-oriented deal. You know, I, I don't think anything's handed out this year. Well, you mentioned that the, the lengthy offseason allowed you to reevaluate some things. What are a few of the things that you're going to, that you and the coaching are going to do differently in the year ahead? Well, I mean, from a holistic perspective, the big takeaway is you know, we got to be more efficient with everything we do. You know, obviously, between the lines, we want to play more efficiently, both sides of the ball, uh, and prioritizing our players' time. Uh, you know, whether it's you know, film, uh, practices uh, and just really come to the chase where now that we've had the vast majority of the, you know under our belt for a year and um, some guys are new and some guys are familiar with you know my style of play um we can fast track things again and i think with that efficiencies um you know prioritizing the most important things every day making sure our guys understand there's going to be a certain standard but that, that standard cannot dip it's incumbent upon 
myself and the staff, but also they got to take ownership of it uh, within the locker room. I think once they do that, we'll we really see a different, different team. Does it help that you are familiar with the strengths and weaknesses of, of Bill and Monty and vice versa? Well, I think it's huge. I mean, it's anytime you have a working relationship with uh, you know, two guys who not only have experience, but uh, have played well in meaningful games, that, that, that goes a long way. That, I think that rubs off onto the group. Um, they're going to bring a level of confidence in those situations, uh, which I think will help uplift the, the rest of the group, the rest of the room, as will Taj and Devon. Both guys have uh, kind of been through the battles, so to speak. Um, so I just think if you look at you know, uh, all the guys, you know, we haven't even touched John Gates, a young guy who, you know, he's going to fight for minutes this year. But uh, and all those acquisitions have helped deep in our roster. So it's a, it's a, it's a really good, uh, great opportunity to, to see where this team can go. One thing I would add is the basketball is a small town, essentially. Everybody knows everybody. It does take a while for players to get familiar. But even just on this roster, this summer we acquired – Monty Morris, who grew up with Coots since second grade. Devon Wright, who played with Kyle again. They were in prep school together, Utah together. Will, being from this area, very familiar. He's been in our building in summers previous to this. I just think the, the players all know each other. I think meshing on the floor, the biggest thing is to, to explain what's expected and give them the time and patience to, to have the repetitions together. But, by and large, is basketball. These guys have known each other. Most of them have known each other for their whole basketball careers. So it's, it's going to be pretty fun to see them get together. Hey, Wes, how are you? Good. Hey, Tommy. How's it Hello. going? So fascinating that, you know, majority of the team is back, but it's still a new team. And Wes, you already spoke about the roster balance. And I'm just curious if this roster is better suited um, to play the defense that you're expecting, or it's just in year two. They should be expected to take a leap forward and and uh, on the defensive side. Well, I think both. Honestly, we have that degree of corporate knowledge. Of, you know how we want to do things tactically. Uh, we've made some adjustments in those areas uh, to hopefully you know, play to the strengths of our group. Uh, but I think having to go through it, you know, the terminology and the overall philosophical things we're trying to do. We look at every metric you know, at the end of the year and go back and reevaluate. What are we doing? Does it fit? Does it work? And, you know, from the defensive perspective, analytically, we did some good things. Now, that didn't necessarily translate, you know, the overall ranking, but our well, shot defensive profile was great. We were number one in the league and, and holding teams, uh, you know, minimizing our opponent's three point attempts. Uh, we forced, you know, I think third best, third most mid range shots. So, all the numbers that you kind of look at and say, all right, well, that's a great start, starting point. Well, what else can we do? You know, I think it's, uh, you know, our overall hand activity, you know, multiple effort, the, the communication piece. And so there are a lot of little things and details I think would be better for having gone through it uh, that should translate into uh, not only better defensive rank rankings and numbers, but also wins. Uh, I do think, you know, getting guys with a little bit more savvy, a little more physicality, a little bit more veteran presence, I think will help guys navigate certain situations. Uh, we had a lot of young guys out there, and it's nobody's fault. Corey's rookie year, and I'm not picking on him, but he wasn't in the cards as far as minutes last year until things uh, things happened. He took full advantage of it. Played, started 36 games. He's going to be better for it having gone through that experience. Um, you know, so I think the more you get those minutes, those live minutes on your belt, uh, the more comfortable you are. Tommy, you're a GM, not a psychic. Totally get that, but on paper, is this a uh, is this a playoff game? I think we just continue to improve. Obviously, that's our everybody's goal to make the playoffs. I think we've got to see the improvement on the defensive end. I think we address that in the summer. Find out in the winter what you did in the summer. And these players are going to have to prove that they are worth what we 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 believe that they are by getting it done on the floor. And defensively, that's a mindset. But certainly, as Wes mentioned, these guys that are coming in, they've been in the trenches. They've been in some pretty huge games. Uh, as recent, you know, conference finals, a couple guys have you know, been 
down that road, I think Delon is going to help us tremendously, especially at end of games. Right? He, he's somebody that could be contending for the all defensive team. And he might not even start. Right? And there, there's a huge opportunity for him to finish games for all these guys to prove that they can go out and make a difference out on the floor. Playoffs, absolutely, that's the that's goal. That's everybody's goal. I just want to see the improvement that we believe is already happening. We got to see it translate out on the floor, and it only totally translates with points. It really does. So that that's going to be a big challenge for all of us to manage expectations of this team, see how they're performing. I think there's enough players that have started games in the NBA. Depth is a very positive thing, but I think the competition is really what we're, we're really stressing with the team this year. Go out and earn your minutes, and you know, he's guaranteed. We certainly have players that we've added. In the last year, but compliment Bradley Beal, what he's able to do. Two years ago, all NBA player, 30 points a night, gets injured and has disappeared from the NBA's radar, it seems, some days. But he's still one of the best players in his position in the league, bar none. Players that we've added that have come from other programs, I want to stress from winning situations. I think that translates well, that that transports to the, to the next team to bring that winning mentality and certainly. I, I think they have a very high standard of themselves and they bring players up to their standard. And sometimes the best coaches are the players in that locker uh, I mentioned Taj, I mentioned Anthony Gill. Those are the guys that the bookends around Bradley and, and his leadership. And everybody has a different leadership style. And then I look at the guys that, that walk through the door uh, with, with Monty, with Will, everything we hope they be and probably more. We'll find out. You know, we're all about going out and performing, not, not the words and every time. But playoffs, strong word, that's sort of our belief. But let's get better. We're going to show the improvement. I think that'll come. Um, I'm just curious, I guess there's probably in the next CBA or the lower the school, maybe lower school, draft eligible age, I'm curious if you have an opinion on that. And do you think it would be I guess easier for guys to make that transition now with the junior in place than it was when for the first wave of high school the NBA guys. You know when it's uh when it's ratified and sits on my desk, I'll answer your question a lot easier. I promise it's not on again. This has happened the week before. The NBA has been through a lot of different iterations. It'll continue to improve. We just want to see the best quality product for the NBA and what's best for this player. But it's hard to talk about a hypothetical. When it's sitting on my desk and it says these are the new rules, I promise, call me. I got that. Nobody else asked the question. It's his ass. It's his ass. <laughs> if and when that day comes. Hey guys, um, Tommy, first for you. Is, is everyone healthy and expected to report on time? With the exception of Pat Delaney, yes. <laughs> it's like one of our assistant coaches. Uh, just trying to get that extra 10 day possibility, you know, but getting in drills. <laughs> It's real contact. And so he actually Pat has a little sore calf. All the players are, are available. They're all healthy. We just we have to monitor monitor like KP Denny. They just came off the competitions and making sure they're 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 in great shape. The ramp up after being at a really high level when we guide them in. And certainly we're gonna go by Bradley and field. I don't think Wes wants to get, you know, three scrimmages in first day. But we're cool. anxious, yeah, just to <laughs> We're anxious to get going. Everybody is healthy, but what degree are we going to expose them to activity before we go and play? Like I said, we have four, essentially four days in Japan to play two games. Right? You, you land Wednesday night, Thursday there's a practice, Friday you play, Saturday practice, Sunday you play, and we. So it's it's a lot of stuff. So you got to really monitor how much you're going to blow it out over there. But these players and they come back home, get some rest, and then those last two preseason games, now you're into the 82 game time. So we have to be careful just coming out and just getting the gas full flow. But right, everyone is healthy, everybody's available. Yeah. Cool. And, and Wes, for you, uh, what decisions in the rotation or the starting lineup are you going to have to make during training camp? Well, hopefully, there's diff different decisions. You know, to Tom's point, you want it to be as competitive as possible. And you know, kind of that mindset is to compete with each other, not against each other. It's just you, you, know, you want to push the guy next to you, but you want it to be in a, in a healthy way. And I think with, with the group that we have, uh, the guys understand that mindset. They're trying to push it with the guy next to you to be the best version of him. Uh, so, you know, the, the roster balance and depth gives us a little bit more flexibility to uh, use guys in certain ways. You know, where on paper, you might say, hey, this guy should be a starter, but 
when they bring them off the bench, is it gives us better balance uh, from either an offense or a defensive perspective. Uh, I think that's what, how we want to prioritize. Uh, you guys both talked about uh, how important the year that game is in the competition. But I wanted to ask about Danny and just what you guys have seen from him. It seemed like he really expanded his ball handling skills and his scoring skills. I just want to know uh, what were your impressions of his play in the year that game? You know, I'm very pleased, um, you know, just watching the games and had conversations with uh, Danny throughout that window um, of him taking on a more of a leadership role, you know, with that group. You know, they, they were counting on him to be, you know, a big piece of what they did and how they did it. And I think just to, to go, kind of go through some of the bumps in, in the road uh, gives him that feel, that experience. There's, there's really no way to simulate. You can't get into practice. You can't, uh, uh, when, they, when you have to go through it in real time, and I think that's the best learning tool. So I think these are valuable minutes for guys like Denny and KP. Uh, they're in, at different spectrums in their career, but I think for KP, it's just to, to, to get him out there and feel his body feels great. And he plays with a level of physicality and confidence. And I think that's a great start to, uh, you know, to this season, because now he comes in in a different place than we required him to you know, be a trade back in February. You know, I, I was in Prague with Danny in game against Finland was a big, big, big point for him right? to, to get the opportunity to send the game into overtime, the leadership role that Wes spoke of, that the ability to take that shot. You know, when you come back here, you know, maybe that's not going to be his role, but we know he can make that shot because he's done it before. I'm very fond of international basketball, very fond of FIFA competitions. They simulate that it's much stress and pressure you can put on a player outside the NBA playoffs. It's there. And, and, you know, his generation, they were U20 champs, U19 champs. There's a high expectation that Israel's going to get, get, continue to climb in the European uh, rankings. Right? So every summer, there's going to be some competition. And we're going to have to work together with Israel, to make sure we share Danny. Obviously, his, his day job is very pressing and very dear to our heart, but we want all of our players to participate with their country. I would say this, the experience that Denny had in his five games there, plus the run up, gave him tremendous confidence. It's seeing the work that he put in earlier in the summer translate. And I think it's it's obvious to our players when he walked in, he's got a little bit more swag to him. And I think everybody watches the games, everybody give him free advice. I think players, they respect the talent those talent. Thing that Danny showed in uh, Eurobasket, he, he's a great playmaker. He, he's very confident with the ball. And he loves the assist, he loves, he loves scoring. So he'll fit in well. He, he loves passing the ball. Guys love playing. Last following up on Jason's question, I related to like kind of lineups of specific John Hayes, just for the three spots specifically, it feels like you've got a lot of there, whether it's Will, Benny, or I mean, like, I'm serious how you see that. No, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's wide open, to be honest with you. I think uh, I, we all have thoughts. I, I have a lot of lineups on my board up there. And uh, I think from this window of practices and even in training camp, of course, what practice when we come back from Japan, it'll, it'll shake out. But uh, to your point, we have a lot of options, you know, from playmaking, scoring, and you know, I think you know, from a defensive perspective, you know, we had some odd lineups last year for a variety of reasons, but even, you know, having Coos play down, you know, then he played the four, uh, we were playing four and five. So just having an opportunity to do do that in real time, I think gives you a better snapshot of what you have and flexibility to go to when you need it. And Tommy, you mentioned before about how uh, the Chris Rossers really changed in the Sixers series. Just how do you evaluate the progress that you guys have made kind of returning over this roster? And, and you feel like the ceiling is now higher than maybe what that old group was, or how do you kind of evaluate the, yeah. the changes that made? I think there I think change is necessary when you're not winning, right? And you want to continue to add pieces, but you can't change your destination overnight. You can change your direction by the things that you do. And ultimately we want to win championship to do those things sometimes you can't skip steps you've got to understand where where you are uh develop young players so through the draft we have rotation players acquire talent i think free agency for us really started at deadline when we acquired kp you know then free agency certainly came and we got from number one number two free agent on the board to re-sign with us right 
and you add their own right to address defense, along with Monty and Will and what they've been able to accomplish, bring a vet like Taj, I, I certainly think that talent has gotten better. The talent has got to go out and perform. And that's that's all of our job is to put them in positions to succeed. I keep coming back to you. Their, their expectation, if you were to have players up here, as Candace would ask that question, they would say, yeah, certainly I would expect that. That's what our players expect of themselves. So that's what we want. I'm managing expectations in the sense that from the, from what you spoke of to, to now, I think it's a very different team, a lot more versatility, a lot more depth and competition for minutes. I'm going to keep saying that it's, it's paramount to the success of this team. But you can't feel like it, okay, whatever I did last night is good enough to continue the ball. You got to prove it every night. You know, West more options at closing time was very important. You know, how do you close the game? You need stops, you need scores, you need to diversify your lineups a lot more. I think that. So I'm excited. I'm excited about the growth of the young guys. I'm, I'm equally as excited about West in year two. All the things that he's learned, his staff, what they did, they learned from last season. You know, there's a great deal of this season's success has become because of some of the tough times that we had last year. I think to piggyback on what Tommy was saying is you know, his job is down at you know, acquisition and our job obviously coaching. But I think the, the biggest thing for me is the fit. You know, the talent is one thing. And I think it's just, you know, there's a better fit. You know, and I think that does help, you know, uh, that competitive spirit, the uh, connectivity that we, when we talk about. And when it fits and guys get big picture, what is the most important thing that's winning? I think that's that's that mindset it seems to be more of a collective uh, within the group. Than I think we've seen the past. It is that how kind of offset that some of the changes that it used to feel like the offense are a lot better. Oh, for sure. And if we were just talking about this the other day, it's we look at internally all the improvements we've made. And we sometimes we neglect looking at what well, other teams got better too. So the level of competition, in particular in the East, is I think dramatically different than what it was, say, five years ago. Uh, competitive side, you know, there's, there are no easy nights. And uh, so we got to be, uh, we, we got to have that mindset that, you know, every night we got to go out and earn. There's, there's no throwaway games. There's no, uh, you know, games you're just going to walk into a win. Uh, we're going to have to, you know, scratch and fight to get every, every win we get. Hey, Coach. Good to see you. Of course. Um, Last last year, a message that resonated was you said stay the course. As you build off your second year, how does that message of staying the course resonate this year? I think it's the same. I mean, I think we're, we're taking a step, you know, and that course, there are a lot of steps. Um, the priority is to make sure we don't skip, you know, neglect certain things, but we, we have to continue to forge forward. And we don't want to get caught into, you know, looking down the road too far. The, 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 the most important game is the next game. That's always been my mindset. I think we, our approach has to remain steady. Uh, when we do that, we'll, we'll continue to kind of pound that rock until we find the result we're looking for. And then you tell me one of the things you said last year was one of the animal dogs. As you look at this roster from a dog perspective, just the mentality. What, what do you like from the pieces you have? I think all the guys that are new to our roster bring uh, a whole different mentality, maybe in terms of their expectations of themselves walking in the door, defining themselves as players and topics that they don't have to tell you about to show you. It's Delon locking up people, Monty and, and Will being able to play both ends, flying around. And, and again, I, I'm going to plug Taj in there, but I'm also going to give Johnny Davis a plug. You know, summer league is the uh, best thing about your rookie years when it's over, best thing about summer league when it's over. You got back in the, the lab. And he got healthy. He was struggling a little bit. Some league was back and stuff. And, and when, when the players got together in LA, I think everybody saw what we saw all season from him as a, as a player in college. And he, he is a dog. He goes hard. He loves to compete. And uh, he, he's got a nasty streak. And I think that whenever that emerges, he's going to earn it. But you know, this time last year, we were, we had Corey in a go-go jersey, and that was where I was going to be, and he ended up playing the 76 games. Yeah. So I don't want to put anything on anybody, but the players that have been added, we certainly think they, they bring another uh, very much work ethic and a passion for basketball that we love to see.
they say they're, they're not afraid to, they're not afraid to not get physical. So that's that's something I think we're really looking forward to. What happens? One or two players can change the way the team is perceived by the other. Team. You have one or two tough guys, all of a sudden people are like, hey, don't mess with me. Yeah. And it brings players that are here, not that they weren't not. So just it brings it out of them when you're surrounding. When you look to your left and your right, there's a lot more fight next to you. It comes out of you too. And I, I can't stress it yet. Uh, last time I'll say it, Taj, Taj is one of those guys. You know, and just in the short time that he's been in here, watching Daniel Gaffer run some tricks in the trade, but also, uh, well, you set a screen, make sure you lay somebody out. That's okay. You know, when you learn that from a fear, I think it means a lot more. No offense to our coach and staff. They say the same things. So sometimes the player will say in a way that the player eye to eye, peer to peer, leaves a little bit more imprint on their head. Okay. I've seen that. Wes, happy 27th birthday. I think. <laughs> I'm curious, did uh, Johnny have any rookie duties since they moved to see no, at the bar? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it's coming. Um, but throughout the year, we don't do a ton, but they do have birthday uh, celebrations. That's kind of the tradition. Um, not for the coaches, just for the players. Um, I'm sure there'll be something. Uh, the vets, and I can see, you know, Taj and those guys handing out some type of responsibility. I think it's good, it's healthy. Um, you know, we all have to go through it, staff included. So it's a, it's a lot of fun, and I think it helps bring guys together. Hey, well, one of my favorite stories about Johnny, though, this summer, right, we had a coach and an athletic physical therapist go visit him in lacrosse this summer. So well, why did why, why the Ken John just come to town? He's like, well, I got a baby. First time I had an NBA, <laughs> use that, an NBA player use that, but it was true. His, his twin brother was playing in Europe, and his parents went to Europe. So he had to be taking his brother and sister to school every day, doing all those things. I was killing him. I said, you got to be kidding me. That's, that's who he is in a nutshell. That was a pretty neat story about him. And, and our, our staff, they went, worked out with him at night and stuff. He took kids to school, made him breakfast, everything. But that's just, <laughs> that's kind of a snapshot. You know, he grew up in the cross and very family oriented the guy and wasn't even thought, yeah, I've got to stay here and babysit him. Okay, that's a good one. We kind of had a good laugh about it, but I think it revealed a lot about him. Wes, with the roster versatility depth that you have, what's the balance between giving certain lineups the continuity to gel together and not necessarily you know, trying to, for every situation, okay, I want this five man lineup versus this five man lineup? No, I think that, that kind of is, you know, that's the most important piece. Uh, I think it'll shake out once you get through training camp and the preseason. You'll, you'll start to see the lineups that you know, work well together. Uh, we've seen some of it, you know, in open runs. Just kind of, you can tell there's a synergy between certain guys. Um, but you know, those are more situational things. End of game, fourth quarter, you know, those are need-based situations where you play offense, defense, you have timeouts to, to burn, you can kind of get guys in and out. Uh, that's where you look at, you know, how do you want to finish the game? You need stops and golf defense, you need fouls of both. You know, it gives you a lot of a lot of guys you can play with. Tommy, you've been around this organization a long time, but it always seems to be a sense of optimism going into training camp in years past. I guess, why do you think that this year, you know, can stand out maybe compared to last year's? I always focus forward, but I really genuinely believe that the, the group of guys that we've assembled for this year, plus what the coaching staff has done, it just, it's remarkable to see you get, a, I sleep better at night knowing each position has a little bit more depth to it. Guys with start experience, they're coming off the bench. That, that just gives you a little bit more of a good sense of where they're headed. Every season, you're right, everybody's on the feet. Everybody thinks this thing. I've seen enough in my years to really know when you panic going into camp because you're missing this or someone's hurt. Right now, so far, it's been really chill on that end. But seeing the growth of our young guys, adding the better people, knowing that Bradley's healthy, knowing that KP and what he can do, watching Kyle as he gets ready to take another step in his career, it just it gives us a great sense, a great feeling. We got to call on Josh. He, he's trying so hard. <laughs> I'm, I'm not jumping the line. <laughs> Keep going up. If, if, only, if only you had managed the expectations of my question as well as you managed the expectations.
question. It's a matter of philosophy, it's a matter of preference. Let's say everybody's healthy. Are you inclined to start games more with a defensive lineups as opposed to a more offensive I don't know if there's I'm not trying to dodge the question or dodge the question rather. I think it's uh, you want to put your best unit out there you know, to start the game. And some nights it, it, it's going to look better than others. Bottom line, match is a matchup for you. Uh, but I'm not going to sacrifice one for the other uh, until we get in those situations where you know that dictates what we need. I, I anticipate us being you know, much better defensively across the board. So I think it's incumbent on our guys to, to continue to get that buy in. Uh, to hold that standard and hold each other more accountable uh, on that end of the court. I think once once we do that, and, you know, it'll take care of itself. But I don't think you, you wait your unit one way or the other uh, to start the game. That's that's not something that uh, I would feel comfortable doing. Yeah. Hi, coach. Uh, I have a great question about the rehab. What kind of uh, expectation do you have this season? Oh, huge expectations, honestly. Um, you know, uh, uh, just having you know him in the second half of the season to see where he is now compared to then, he's seems like he's in a different place. You know, I know last year he added a three point shot to his game. Uh, so he spent a lot of time this summer working on you know, spatially playing on the perimeter. That, that's just a new iteration for him. Uh, ball handling, finishing, continuing to shoot the you know the three point shot well. Uh, and just watching him in the open runs, he's playing with an air of confidence that's uh, it's remarkable. It's really exciting to see him, Kyle, uh, these guys go at it. It's, it's fun to watch. What's just the significance of you being a head coach going to Latvia? Um, if you could just give us a little peek of what that uh, time was like, whether you guys talked about basketball, more about family, just seeing him in his natural habitat. but. Just the significance of that. I know it happens in NBA, but yeah. still seems pretty cool. Well, I, I think it's, you know, for me personally, it's an experience. I've never been to that far. So having the opportunity to uh, get over there and, and just for a small window, three days, uh, tour the city. And it's, of course, you know, to, to my benefit to tour the city with, with him. One of those famous <laughs> people, Mafia, uh, you know, and, and just organically just spend time. Uh, watch practice, you know, get an opportunity to see what they do, how they use him, some of the offensive and defensive things and, you know, that I think benefit you know, their team, but also him specifically. Um, and then just uh, just spend time, you know, a lot of dinners, lunches. Uh, I think that's just a way to further strengthen the relationship where it's, uh, you know, they know we're fully vested in him as a player, that's a given, but, you know, also as a person. And you know, I personally want what's best for him. And I know when he's at his best, he's, he's going to help this, this franchise. So uh, to see him flourish in that environment, you know, to see him on his, on his own turf, so to speak, you know, there's a comfort level with that. Um, and, you know, be around his teammates, uh, spend time with the coaching staff. It was just a terrific opportunity. Lastly, okay. I don't want to embarrass Wes, okay, but, but go ahead. I, I was with Lavia in Great Britain uh, when. when they were playing uh, final ballpark, but the coaching staff couldn't say enough about the time he spent with them and, and really helping them because they were new to him too. That they have a fantastic new coach. He's Italian, the first non latvian ever to coach their national team. And I can't say it enough. It is a huge thing for Latvia to get to the World Cup. So it's everything about that. That's, it was a big pressure situation, actually. Chris has to get back to the national team. So I was at their game. In Newcastle, spent time with him, and, and that was the first thing out of their coach's mouth. Was, coach West was fantastic, and all the time he spent with their staff and everything. You know, when you travel basketball, you have a responsibility as an ambassador of your team, as an ambassador of the NBA. Most people understand that. Sometimes they don't. But West took it to an extreme with their staff. They were so grateful. And I think it meant the world for KB to come out there and see somebody on their own turf go out and see the sites. It wasn't his hometown, but he spent a ton of time in Riga. Uh, we got to reconnect with Don Beast and a couple of other young players and stuff. It's just, it's wonderful. 
cultural exchange, coaching exchange. Like I said, it's a small world. Basketball is a very small town. The head coach of that team. Now with Wes, like they're on the phone. They're, acting, they're, they're texting each other, asking questions. It's a neat thing that happens. Just one medical question. Is there uh, any plan with the medical team to have Chris Stapps uh, on some sort of plane, limit, limit, limited playing time or no back-to-backs or anything like that? Any plan like that? No. Okay. Wes, uh, what type of impact could DeLon Wright make defensively to you guys? You know, I think it'll make a big impact. You know, it's uh, I think it's an underrated, you know, free agent acquisition, in my opinion. Um, you know, he's played, you know, lead guard, combo guard. He has the flexibility of uh, being out there with, you know, dynamic scores. You know, obviously, like Brad did so in Atlanta with Trey Young. Uh, you know, so there's a fit you know, and his ability to impact the game on the defensive end is, is uh, that, that's, we've seen, you know, and I think it's important. He embraces it. And uh, in having conversations with him during that free agent window, uh, he made a comment, you know, I've never heard a player, you know, just asking, what are your personal numbers? And, you know, a lot of guys were going there, different numbers and metrics. And he said, I want to make it a defensive team. All defensive team. First time I've ever, ever heard of him. I think that's, that really stuck with me. Was, that's his mindset. He knows uh, that's his role. Uh, he can get back winning in that, in that way. But I don't think he gets enough credit, you know, as a lead guard. Very capable of playing. You cross match, you can guard small forwards. So it gives you the flexibility to downsize at times. Um, you, know, you can match up the way you want defensively, but not put three playmakers out on the field. Uh, so I was really you know, excited to have a guy of his caliber. Uh, of course, his experience, his playoff, uh, his playoff background, uh, you know, adding that into the fold, I think, relevant. You know, yeah. Coach, sticking with the defensive team, you said that your team did a great job limiting threes and mid-range shots. Is there a list of things that you have defensively that you are expecting from the team this season? Uh, as far as improvement? Improvement. Oh, yeah. Yes. A long list. Um, and I, I think I didn't want to look at the, everything we did, kind of reevaluate uh, with, with our staff. But sometimes it's easy to get down when you look at the big picture and didn't go as well as you like when we start going through some of the you know, individual metrics, we're like, well, that's not terrible. How can we get marginally better in that area? And the marginal gain in a, in a number of areas will hopefully equal significant gain overall. Um, and I think having more important for our guys is a big piece of it. Uh, we have made some tactical changes, nothing completely divergent, but uh, ways to enhance what we do, how we do it. Uh, and hopefully, you know, our guys, you know, they seem to have bought into some of the new things quickly, which hopefully expedites, you know, uh, how it translates between, you know, between the lines. Well, so one of those lines, KP's individual defensive metrics are quite good, actually, in, in different areas. Well, so and that's I'm, a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think people think of that right. when they think of him. So how do you systemically kind of I don't know if you want to funnel stuff to him, but how do you, you know, schematically take advantage of the fact that he's pretty good at the rim? Well, I think that's your point. It's, he's not regarded as such. We saw in that small window for the end of the year uh, with him specifically in pick and rolls. He does a terrific uh, job of baiting guys into that mid-range shot. He knows when to step up and test. He's got enough length, you know, rim protection. You always want to try and get downhill at him. Um, you know, we're not to the point where we want to funnel teams. You know, I think big priority for us is our paint defense. Um, and that's not just pick and roll. It's, you know, our ability to close out and contain, uh, you know, shrinking behind those containments, you know, kind of limit driving avenues. So there's a lot of layers to each one of those things that will help, you know, KP specifically at the rim. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, once we kind of clean up a lot of areas, I think it will help a number of people. Uh, you know, but I think he does a tricky job, you know, and he doesn't get enough credit for it. I mean, how much of that is Monty in, in his ability to kind of stay in front of guys or at least be in a contest position or in a recovery position? Right. Well, the recovery piece is big, you know. We, we have to have that, you know, help with the, you know, the mentality of helping the game. And, you know, on the ball, it's, you know, trust your health, don't rely on 
that mindset of taking that challenge and being able to stay in front of at least one video. Now we can get we can bring help to you. Um, the, the way the game is officiated, the way you know the spacing, uh, the volume of three point shooting uh, really tilts toward the offensive end. So doing things a little bit different on, on the defensive end, getting a little more creative. Some of the uh, things we do with special players hopefully helps you know on those on those off nights. But having a base now you know in place from last year, adding an augment a few things hopefully will will translate. Hey, Wes, when you um, when you sat down this offseason and just kind of took a look at the year from a new standpoint in terms of what you were able to do coming in in year one and everything, anything, was there anything you, you said, I really want to do that differently going into year two? Or year two for me is about kind of this in terms of my... What kind of goes career. back to the efficiency, you know, how I work, how uh, we as a staff operate. You know, well, I think last year there, there was a lot of self-replication. Um, so just trying to streamline you know, how we, how we prepare. What do you mean by self prep? Well, I mean, it's, you know, I've always worked as an assistant. So working less as an assistant, more as a head coach and delegate, being able to be comfortable with that. I think I have a terrific staff, very confident, hardworking, organized. Um, I felt at times that we were, we were all kind of doing the same thing. And so just kind of cleaning up, uh, you know, each individual coach's responsibility. Hopefully that, that leads into more efficiency with how we do things, how we prioritize our players' time. Um, and then therefore, now we work more efficiently. We practice more efficiently. Um, and getting back to Tommy's point, that spirit of competitiveness of practicing how we want to play. At times, I think we got into just checking the box and, hey, make sure we're doing this, this, and this, and not prioritizing the most important thing. Uh, so we've had these conversations. We've kind of you know, ironed some things out. but. Uh, I'm excited to see the workflow, how things are changing.